said, you, you fellas don't, you barons don't really seem to understand. King John and I have a contract. We signed a treaty. All of that land of England belongs to me. And those people cannot have the common law unless I say so. And they wrote back and they said, you don't understand. There's a whole bunch of them people, and if we go to them now and tell them that their common law is no good, they'll kill us all. And they wrote back and they said, no, they won't. Just add one law to their common law, and you'll kill their common law. So they put in, I think it was something like six years for stealing. Everybody thought that was a great idea. Well, I'm not stealing today, so that's good. Yeah, give everybody, give them six years. What they did is if somebody talked against the king, they'd go out and pick him up and charge him with stealing. They killed their common law. It's what they did. And from then, then when they had him in jail, they'd go out and commit the crime that they were going to charge him with. Does it sound like that goes on now? Sure. And so, uh, so that's what killed the common law back then. And then they brought in this thing called law merchants, and that's what the Revolutionary War was over. Everybody thinks it's over, you know, throwing the tea into the water and all this other. But the Revolutionary War was fought because those people did not want law merchants coming into this nation. They knew what it was, and they knew how it killed the people in England. Because they had had it since about 12, uh, 15 thereafter when they got their common law and they thought they were free from the king's uh, clutches, all of a sudden this law merchants comes in and they start dragging them in through the law merchants then. And so they brought it here and that didn't hit this country until 1938 through a ruling called here Railroad versus Tompkins. But uh, in the bonds, the bonds are listed all over the. Uh, they're in. They're in. You can't find where you can't pay for something with a bond. The system in this country is set up as a promise to pay. It has nothing to do with anything else. All you're doing any time you go out and and go to a grocery store is you give them thirty dollars worth of Federal Reserve notes. It's a promise to pay. You cannot pay a debt with a debt, nor can you pay a bill with a bill. All you can do is issue a promise to pay and discharge the debt. It's the only way the system can work, and that's the only way it does work. We've been taught so many years that there's money. Well, you can feel it in your pocket. You know, it'll buy anything. People kill for it. But it's simply a promise to pay in the final analysis. So everything that happens, it's a promise to pay. And, and when you go down and buy a house, I made the analogy down in Houston. I was at a seminar down there this weekend. And you talk about some people are starting to wake up. I mean, they they were telling me things. They told me, and, and I, I've got to get a hold of it, but they, one man said, this is how you enforce things. And when he told it, it made all the sense in the world. And so how you enforce these uh, when you have these uh, uh, invoices for violation of your copyright. And, uh, and it works. So all of this stuff, uh, and then the man was talking about uh, this, uh, uh, the uh, probate. And uh, he was telling me about it. And I said, well, it sounds, sounds like, you know, what I've said. He said, it's exactly what you're saying. What is saying in there is nobody can make a legal determination for you. That's what the attorney said that time, that the, one, the woman that came to the class, she wandered in there. And so by the document she was looking for, he figured out pretty quick that she is one of those radical people that don't pay taxes. And so instead of saying, he just told her, he said, it looks like this will work. I would never thought of it this way. And as he turned to walk out of the room, he said, if the people in this country ever figure out that everything is by legal determination, they'll turn the country right side up. And that's what it really amounts to. Now, do I trust that attorney? Uh, don't know it. <laughs> and probably don't, but in that instance, he, what he said was true. And, uh, and uh, it, uh, we, we sit and we read what they say, and they write to us 
and we can't even really understand what they're saying. You know, and then we're going to try to answer them. You know, you've seen Perry Mason, he does it. You've seen uh, Matlock, he does it. I mean, they don't, don't they always defend the person who didn't do it? They always get a guy that everybody's accusing, but he didn't do it, and Matlock and them always end up with him. And they prove he didn't do it. And so they, they, what they do is they entrap us with this thing of letting you think that attorneys are in there fighting for you. Since 1973, they can't fight for you. They can only plea bargain to get you a better deal. That's all they can do. If you think anything else, you try it. And watch him about halfway through the trial, if he even comes in before the trial starts, and he'll say, I got you a good deal. You got 10, 10 years instead of 50. If you don't give the judge trouble during the uh, allocution. And so what we, what we need to understand is who you are and quit worrying about who they are. Learn what I'm saying. And it's a little more involved now than the, uh, I handed you those things and I'm not sure. Let me, let me see one of those. Uh, let me see if I got in that. I don't think I did. No. The, the, uh, where you have the, uh, uh, instructions for the bonds, you have just a little more down at the bottom. And you simply say, Equality under the law is paramount. That's what? Sure, got a lot of them. Which page is uh, it on? It, it's on third page. It's the third page. All right. Always inc- include this this phrase. Uh, after uh, this, uh, you have when you have done this. What what you want to do in there instead of saying when you have done this, say send it to me within three days. Return the voucher within three days. The voucher, the voucher is all of the paperwork that they have in their file. They're supposed to give that to you. Where do we put that? Huh? This. This. After this. Huh? Okay, let me word it for you, and we'll see if we can get this down. I've got it down out in the car, but don't have it here. But you simply say, accepted, and whoever it is that wrote to you, an attorney, you know, name him. I accept your letter or your offer dated so-and-so, and I am returning this to you for closure and discharge of the matter of this matter. If you're going huh? For closure, not foreclosure. For closure, not foreclosure. And what you're saying then is you're, you're going to, at that point, if you're going to write a bond, you say with bond, with attached bond. And if you're doing this instructions, you got to have a bond on the other side anyway. So you're, you're returning it for closure with bond, and then you say this bond is attached to the master bond of the judge. All judges have master bonds. This is in your probate statutes also. This bond is attached to the master bond. It is also attached to the clerk of the court's bond. It's attached to the bailiff's bond. Anybody in that courtroom attach it to their bond. They must be bonded to bring you in there. Huh? Do what? Of the judge, the clerk of the court, 
the bailiff, and uh, anybody else that you, uh, the whoever it is that sent it to you. In other words, the attorney that sent it to you. Attach it to his bond. Anyone whose name pops up on anything, attach it to his bond. And then you tell him uh, it's uh, equality under the law is paramount. I am competent to handle this matter. And I am firing, you can put that in however way you want to, I always put fire with an explanation point beside it. Other people say, well, that's too, too, that's just the way I like to do it. I'm hereby firing the judge, the guy that wrote it to you, the clerk, the bailiff, anybody that had anything to do with what's going on. And if it's a traffic ticket, you put the policeman's name. And then you say, and I'm now declaring these people as incompetent. Return the voucher. You're using my exemption. I'm sorry, return the voucher in three days from receipt of this. What they're supposed to give you back is all the papers concerning that case is supposed to go away. You're using my exemption and then sign it by and then sign your name and put the date underneath it. Comma agent? Huh? Comma agent? Yeah, comma agent. No, not necessarily agent. You don't have to say it. If you've got a power of attorney, put agent. Let's go back. If you are using my... You're using my exemption. And then buy, and then sign your name. <clears throat> oh, I'm firing these people, and you name them. Yeah, you name the people that you're firing, and then you say, "I am hereby declaring these people as incompetent." Now, where did? Where, what were we using way before this, uh, way back when we used to use this, and it's called a negative averment. And you're saying the same thing in a negative averment. You're simply saying, I, your upper and lower case, am not a corporation. I am not a fiction. I am a natural born uh, living soul. Then the second part is, and that's what you're saying when you're saying equality under law, I have, I am competent to handle this. That's what you're saying. The second thing is, and I hereby declare that XYZ Corporation, uh, Judge so-and-so, uh, uh, Attorney so-and-so, and all these people, I hereby declare that they're corporations and they do not exist. And if you don't think that'll work, try it. It has. And um, the uh, what you're doing is you're firing all of them out of there. You're declaring because you can declare they don't exist. A natural living soul can declare a fiction does not exist. Had an interesting thing with Gary Graham when he was alive, and I love Gary. I uh, used to work with him all the time. But uh, Gary came to me one day and he said. Uh, I found where the 40, why 42s don't, Title 42s don't work. And I said, why is that? And he said, because people are not using the, the Supreme Court's uh, rules. And I said, Gary's Supreme Court doesn't exist. And he said, they're the ones that make the rules. And I said, they don't exist. They make the rules. I said, Gary, you're not hearing me. I, Alvar Rice McLeod, do hereby state that the Supreme Court is a corporation and it does not exist. You make me so mad, he said. <laughs> but it, it, it's really what it is, you see. It's you knowing who you are, and since you created this monster, 
then you can also fire him. You can also declare he doesn't exist. If you declare he does exist, why can't you declare he doesn't exist? You think the Creator couldn't declare you you don't exist? Poof, and you're gone. <laughs> you fall off the face of the earth. Find out it's not round. It's square. <laughs> uh, but uh, don't laugh. A lot of people used to believe that a long time ago. Or that's what they said. So anyway, uh, the, the the issue in all of it is that is who you are, and the bonds are good. You got to learn to use them, and you got to learn that any time they send you something back, I've had two or three people tell me that the sheriff sent it back, and the sheriff said, "I don't know what this thing is. I'm sending it back to you. If you want me to deliver this to somebody." Give me $100 and I'll deliver it. What was he trying to do? It was stuck to his fingers and he couldn't get rid of it. He's trying to get you to give him the, the, the authority to take it off his fingers. And every time when they wrote across, I said just write across it, accept it, and return to you for closure in this matter, and discharge, and sign it and send it back to him. You never have got them back. They never did send them back. Why? He just tried to get loose of it. They know what they mean. They know that you're allowed to write a bond. CIA comes in and says you're not. You can't write those bonds. By what authority? By whose authority? Can anyone tell me by whose authority they come in and say you can't write them? He's an agent. He's out of my venue and jurisdiction. What does he do have to do with me? Number one, he's a crook. They control all the money all over the world. What people think is money. It's funny how people they start hearing about all these banks being opened up out in the Caribbean. And everybody started taking their life savings and everything and putting it out there. That way they wouldn't have to pay any taxes. Guess who set those up? The CIA set them up. They wanted to know who in this country is trying to hide money that they wouldn't pay taxes on it. So they set them all up. And they even had countries that would write you and say, hey, we'll fire anybody in that bank and put him in prison for 50 years if he divulges to the FBI, CIA, or anybody else what's in your account. You remember Switzerland used to be that way. And all of a sudden Switzerland changed because they got enough people in there trying to hide their money, and now all of a sudden they changed the law and they opened the, the vaults up. And they said, this belongs to this guy, this guy, this guy. And they said, oh, you've been doing something crooked, huh? And they come in and get him. But this is exactly what it's about. You take what, what is the only thing you can put in those banks out in the Caribbean? Well, either Federal Reserve notes or what? A blip on the uh, computer. What happens if they decide they want your money? They blip it out. <laughs> and you don't have any. You're better off to take a chance with the Federal Reserve notes in your pocket than it is sending it over to one of those island deals. I'm telling you, too many people have lost their money. And we got into uh, just about every island that you could ever think of. I've been into all that, of trying to find one. And we all... I mean, we heard this same thing. Oh, we'll fire them. Well, we got the safest deal in the world. And uh, it never did work that way. But we went, we found, I didn't know, they got islands out in the Pacific. Because they make lots of money off of that. That's how most of them exist. And guess who owns all of those islands in the Caribbean? The Queen of England owns them. And I was working for a man. He was going. He was going to get out of this thing before what was the year two thousand, whatever that was. And uh, he was. He sold his business. He sold out. And he had this uh, one island called the um, uh, Republic of uh, Dominica. It was just called Dominica. There's a Dominica Republic, and then there's Dominica Island. And he went. He was going to go to the Dominica. So he had do. He had me while he was out running his business and selling and all that, I stayed in the office, and so he had me reading up on this Dominica. 
And he said, uh, come in. I said, well, Jeff, I said, those things still, they're owned by the, oh, no, they're not owned by the Queen. She gave them their independence in 78. And I said, Jeff, I said, it says right here that, yeah, they gave them their independence, but the Queen still owns them. You know, they train ever every president or what, whatever they have on the island. Every one of them are trained at in England at those two colleges they have there. And they're sent back to the island and they're put in as governor or whatever. And so uh, he decided he'd take a trip over there. And he came back with a pocket full of their money. And he said, you're exactly right. The queen owns everything. Her pictures on every dollar bill, her pictures on every quarter, every half dollar, it's on everything over there. And I said, that was just a trick to let, just like they did us. Y'all are free, but don't let me catch you going five miles over the speed limit. See? And this is what they did to them. This is what they did to us. So the experiment they did to us it worked pretty well, so they put it into all their little islands. They did that. Most of them got into that situation about 78. Up until then, England just totally ran them. And uh, uh, so uh, the bonds are not statute bonds. This is what people don't understand about the bonds that have been written. This does not come from a statute. There's no statute that gives it its validity. It comes simply from a sovereign who is saying, I promise to pay you. Who are you to tell me I won't pay don't tell me I have bad credit. I have all the credit in the world. I can write you a promise to pay any day I want to. <laughs> and it's just as good as another promise to pay. And so the bonds, that's exactly what they are. They're not a statute bond. It's, it's in statutes. When you set stuff up in statutes, it's when the problem starts. Why can't you write a hot check. They have statutes that say if you write a hot check, you're going to jail. So you don't write a hot check. You're creating debt. The sovereign cannot create debt. He becomes a debtor, and a sovereign cannot be a debtor. He is always the creditor. He always has all the credit that anybody needs. We just have not been taught that. And by the banks... I made. I tell you, I made the the, the the allusion to the banker that, you know, you come in, you want to buy a three thousand dollar car. He sits across the table from you, kind of leans back with his hands behind his head, you know, and nonchalant. You know, he could care if you was there, or care less if you was there. But all of a sudden, you're a business, and you come in there, and you're going to run a four billion dollar deal. Guess what side of the table he's on then? He's just sitting right beside you with his arm around you. You know why? Because you're going to create a lot of credit for him. And so he's wanting you to think that you're important now. See, up until that point, see, we give the banker the credit for us writing the, uh, the, the promissory note. Did the banker sign it? No, it's not his note. It's your note. The stupidity of us is we haven't learned to take those things with us. Because who bar who supposedly borrowed the money from the bank? The straw man. The all capital letter guy. Who has signed that thing as surety? The natural living soul. Now, if you are the natural living soul. Anything you sign like that, why wouldn't you immediately go and place a UCC-1 claim against it? It's yours. It has nothing to do with a straw man. That bank has a hold to your, your, uh, uh, no, they've, they've got your, your promissory note. They've got also, they've got your down payment. Why in the world? They have to hold that, don't they, until that note is paid completely off. Otherwise, they'd be committing fraud. But do they hold it? No. 
they put them out all over the world and use them as um, bill. Uh, they they use them for uh, as money, and they put them out all over the country. But that belongs to you. Sometimes you ought to try it when you pay one of them off. Ask them to send you the original promissory note, and watch how some of them crawfish and say, well, it, it may take a while because they don't have it a lot of times. And so the the issue on the, uh, the, the bonds is that they're good. You issued them. There are no statutes that, that uh, cover them. The same thing, you wonder why the 1041s work. There's no statutes that cover a 1041 where a person does not call himself a trust but files it on the trust document. He just simply files his name. They know he's a trust. They'll try to add trust to it. And you say, accept it and return to you. No, no thanks. We're not going to call this a trust. And then you put the number on the side, the first two numbers, your Social Security number, and then put that out. You created your own number. Now, what will they write and tell you? Hey, let me send to you a E I N number. Um, accepted and returned. No thanks. You don't want them to get that document you filed in there under their statutes. And that's where they have a problem with that 1041. When you fill it out like that, if you check any of those trusts, you're going to find out that you come under statutes then. You never check one of those trusts. You don't tell them what kind of trust. You just fill it out. They know you do not owe taxes. And you're doing what they tell you. You're, you're, you're uh, filing. So they can't come and say you hadn't filed. These things, are the, and, and so the bonds work the same way. There are no statutes that rule them. I've had people tell me, well, I've, uh, you know, statute so-and-so says that bond has to be this way and that way. Well, it would if it was under that statute, but it's not. And uh, I have a, a man in Houston that he and I, he's he's always using the law and, and all this, and, and I'm this other way, and, and he emails me. You know, by God, you're right about those those bonds. We found it in the statutes. Well, good. You know, I didn't need it to verify to me, but he uses statutes to verify stuff. I don't use third parties. If I don't use them, I don't have to bring any of them in. So when we understand the bonds will pay... Will will discharge any debt that you come across, because the government has made a promise. The Treasury will pay your debts dollar for dollar, and start calling them a debt, and start discharging them. It's all you can do with them is discharge. If you got any questions? Write them on a piece of paper, if you would. Okay. Is there any? Have you collected any? Let's start. Do you have any information on Native American automobile license plates? No. Uh, there is there's things going on with the uh, with the license plate. Let me see if I can read it better with my glasses. May not say what I thought. <laughs> Do you have any information on Native American automobile license plates? No, not specific information. There's a lot going on on those. There's a man down in Houston that's uh, really getting close to that, and uh, he's uh, he's really. And when he gets it done, I'll pass it on to you. Is someone here who has used the bond process to overcome the property tax issue? Yes, yes. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, it works, and and I'm telling you, I've been through it, and I go I go through it without the bond, and went through it without the bond, 
because it's a matter of keeping a third party out. Every time a third party would write, I'd just write back to them and tell them, I don't know who you are. you got to be a third party debt collector. I don't give you permission to get involved in my business. Never hear from them again. It will go in a whole circle and goes right back to the tax assessor collector. Is there, is there one here who has had a levy or lien by the IRS removed using the bond? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I know they've been done. I don't know if there's anyone here who has done it.